Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney and I have a very exciting video today. <laughs> or I'm just excited about it. Okay, so today we have a pattern release, but there's so much more. Um, all right, so today, so Love Notions um, is primarily women's sewing patterns with some girl patterns, a few boy patterns, and then, oh, I think like four, four maybe, men's patterns. Um, so Tessa and Tammy do most of the pattern, or do the pattern drafting for the women's patterns and the kids' patterns. Um, and then Kelly, they have hired on to do, she's done the men's patterns for Love Notions pattern line. Kelly was in school for a little bit, now she is out and um, she is finished. And so they, I think, it sounds like they're gonna be expanding their men's pattern line um, and focusing on that a little bit in addition to the stuff that they're doing. I mean, they have a ton of plans for the women's line, which is very exciting. <laughs> Uh, but they do have some plans for expanding the men's as well, which is great because it's so hard. There's only a few pattern companies that do the men's patterns and um, do them well. So it's exciting that they're doing this. And on a personal note, this is exciting because for the first time in a really long time, my son has started to ask me um, to sew for him. Now he did ask for a couple of things like last year. Well, the corduroy pants were more me pushing him because he needed nice pants. And then he asked for the two jackets that he, um, that he wears one a lot. The other one is the one that, you know, he, it wasn't as stretchy as he wanted, but we're gonna get into that. So today's pattern is um, one of the boys patterns that Love Notions has is the Thomas track pants. And I guess there's been a lot of requests for that in a men's size. Most of the men's patterns also have like a, a boy counterpart, like a, a boy pattern counterpart, um, kind of. So um, there's been a lot of requests for a men's track, Thomas track pants. And so um, that is what has been released today. It's all very exciting. So I immediately jumped on um, as an ambassador saying I would love to make up a pair for the release and it morphed into multiples. <laughs> so, um, okay, so let's talk about the pattern a little bit. It's a very simple pattern. It comes with just a straight front and back, um, kind of almost like a lounge pant, um, straight leg all the way down, that sort of thing, elastic at the waist, has pockets, um, inseam pockets, and then it also has a version that has some color blocking, Some so they've cut apart the pieces so you could do your own color blocking if you want with instructions on how to do some um, piping around there. Also instructions for how to do zippers at the bottom. If these are going to be like a pant that you put on for basketball, for instance, if you want to be able to unzip the hem of the pants, so you can easily get them on and off over tennis shoes without taking those off. And there's options for lining. If you wanted to do, um, maybe, a um, make something a little bit warmer, um, do like a flannel lining or even just like a lighter layer lining. If it's, um, like a, a, a windbreaker style pant, but that also, the wind can kind of get through, you know, just to make them a little bit warmer. My husband has a couple of athletic pants that when we'd walk in the winter, he'd be like, I feel like I'm not wearing pants at all because the wind would whip through them. Well, obviously a thin lining would help with that. So there's also options for that. Um, okay, so enter my son who is not picky because he wears athletic wear, but he does have very, it's all about function for him. A little bit about form, mostly about function for him. <laughs> So I said, hey, I'm gonna, you know, be making up a pair for this pattern launch. Um, can I make you up a pair? And he says, yeah, great. But I'd really like, I, I, I only like pockets that zip <laughs> because, because he puts a phone in his pocket and he likes to be able to zip it up so that he doesn't have to worry about his phone pop popping out. Now these are nice, big, deep pockets in this pant pattern. So definitely enough room for a phone. And I think it would be fine if your pocket didn't zip, but he wants pockets that zip. I can make that happen, so that's what I did. So that's what the first pair of iteration of these pants. Now we went to, and he went with me to Joanne's. Um, my daughter like lets me pick out fabric for her, not my son. He likes to, he's very tactile, he likes to touch everything. So we went to Joanne's and they had this modal fleece that feels like heaven. And he's like, yes, I want that, that feels fantastic. So we grabbed some of that. Um, we decided that gray would be a good um, contrast for the pockets and also for the zippers. So I have put zippers into the pockets. So they zip up into those inseam, inseam pockets. I'm gonna show you how to do that here in a minute. <laughs> These aren't really the most beautiful. It took me four pockets 
by the fourth pocket, because two pockets for each pair, I'm, I'm, I've got it down now, we're good. Um, so the version I'm showing you is the good version. But um, it's got a grown on facing for the top of the pant, which means the elastic gets sewn into the top and then it gets folded down into the pant, um, which works really well. I've got one of my tags on there, but he still wanted a drawstring because um, even though we measured the elastic nice and tight around his waist, um, it, he still wanted the extra security of the drawstring. So I put in some holes for the drawstring and he went, he picked out the color of shoestring that I had in my stash um, for those. So here's him in this version. Great, perfect, he loves them. Things are nice and comfy. But after having them on, he did say, he's like, these are great for a lounge pants, something I would definitely wear around the house and that sort of thing. But he's like, I really prefer a cuffed jogger for wearing outside of the house because he likes it hugging his ankles so that he um, can run around, play soccer, anything at a moment's notice. He's a 15 year old boy. I don't even want to begin to understand the mind of a 15 year old boy. But <laughs> he thought that yes, that this would be perfect, but he wanted him um, um, a jogger. So I'm really quickly gonna show you how I transferred this pair of pants from the straight leg into a jogger. Okay. So first I'm going to walk you through how I made this pattern a um, jogger pattern. Um, and I'll even show you how I've altered the original pants to do this. But I'm going to show you everything on the pattern because obviously if you're just wanting to start off making a um, jogger pattern, like this is you know before you cut anything out. All right, so what I've done first, I've made a couple of markings on my pattern here. Hopefully you can see them okay. This is a little long for me in frame, so I'll try and like, um, okay. <laughs> so what I've done, um, these are cut to his um, length. I took two inches off just the bottom because that's what he needed to have removed. This is drafted for a person that is 5'8". My son's actually 5'7", but he is very long in the torso. He and my daughter both, they're both like my husband. Very long in the torso, so his legs are on the shorter side, which is the same as my husband. My husband's six feet tall and only has, like he can get away with like a 31 inch inseam pant. Um, my son is is built similar, similarly. So anyway, um, this is, would be the bot where I would cut for a pair of pants, like the pants that you saw. This is where um, I cut for that. But for the joggers, I'm gonna be adding a two inch cuff to the bottom. So I've taken this up actually three inches because the regular pant hangs over the shoe to, to touch, you know, or to be just like right above the ground. Obviously with a jogger, that's gonna hit at the ankle. So you're gonna lose some um, uh, length there, but I don't want it to be like perfect to the ankle. I want some extra room. I like some blouse on, if that makes sense. So I've just marked the jogger line here up three inches. Um, and I've got a two inch cuff. So two inches will be added back. So really I'm just shortening the pants by an inch when all is said and done. But with them sitting at the cuff, that gives a little bit of that blouse on effect, which is what he likes in his ready to wear pants. So that's why we're doing it that way. We may change it for future pairs, but for this one, that is what we are doing. Um, so the pants that you see here in a minute are the ones that I've taken the hem up three and or taken the bottom up three inches and then added a two inch cuff. Now, I have also decided to um, take in the inseam here at the ankle by an inch and a half on each side. And this is on both the front and the back. I've gone in a half of it or one and a half inches on each side um, because I want to taper it a little bit just because that's a lot to, to feed in to the cuff. And I got the cuff because I measured a pair of pants that he currently, a pair of Under Armour pants that he loves. So that's kind of where I've got some of these measurements. Um, which takes the hem circumference down six inches, um, which is perfect because six inches um, gives me a cuff of, let's see, I think that actually makes the bottom of the pants like 11 and a half inches from 17 and a half. I think that's right. The hem circumference of each leg. Um, and I've made the cuff four and three quarters uh, because I've got a three eighths of an inch seam allowance. So when this gets folded over, It'll be a two inch cuff, which is what his pants that he loves are. And um, I got the width of nine and three quarters because I just took 85% of the 11 and a half and got the nine and three quarters. There was some rounding in there, but um, that's kind of how I got my numbers where I got those. So my cuff for the size extra small is four and three quarters by nine and three quarters. And I've cut two of them. So those will get cut. God, I still have the pant fluff everywhere. <laughs> 
<laughs> so I'll sew those together, right sides together, um, like you would a cuff, and then they'll get folded over on each other and then get attached to the bottom of the pant. Okay. So that is how I'm doing the cuff. Now, if you have made the regular pants, and again, these are great for um, sleepwear for him. He just prefers in his everyday life, as we've discussed with him before, he just, oh, got a long tail there. He just really likes to be able to um, play a game of soccer at a moment's notice. So he needs his pants up above his shoes. I don't know. I don't, I don't even try and get into the brain of a 15 year old boy, but for everyday wear, he wants the um, jogger style. So that's what we're doing with this pair of pants because he does really like these and wants to wear them to school and stuff, which I am counting a huge win because he does not request nearly the amount of things my daughter does. So I'm going to move the pattern. Obviously, if I'd cut these out by the pattern, I would have just, you know, used my um, tracing wheel to mark on the fabric and then I would have, you know, cut the side seams correctly. But because, oh, I also, before I take away the pattern, I also on here because um, when I show you how to do the pocket, um, those are shorts and I've marked my short line shorts here, which is a almost 11 inches from the top to the hem. And again, I did that with, and that's including the hem allowance. Um, actually, you can kind of see the mark where I marked the end of the shorts and these are just ready to wear shorts that he really loves. And that's how I found, you know, I just matched up the inseam until I found the length and then added an inch for the hem. So I have marked my shorts line on the pattern. So hopefully this will be a good master pattern. I've also marked up here if I don't want to use the grown on facing, if I would like to add a waistband instead, um, I've just marked down the two inches um, for a two inch wide waistband up here. Um, so yeah, so I have that option up there as well if I want to do that differently. And that is what I'm going to do on the um, shorts that you'll be seeing um, just because it's kind of a scratchy material and he would rather have the softer knit as the waistband. So that is what I'm doing there. Two inch wide waistband. Obviously, technically you should add back another three eighths of an inch for the seam allowance, but I'm just taking off two inches off the top. It'll be three eighths of an inch shorter at the top, but that's not a big deal. Okay. So that is that. So if you've made the pants and your person that you're making these for also decides that they want a tapered leg. This is how we do that. So I have the pant um, laid out here and keeping in mind that um, the back is longer than the front. So see how this is bubbling up a little bit and we want to keep that. So for one side, and this is the inseam, this is the inseam side. I'm just pushing everything over here. I'm not worried about that lining up, but I want my hem to lie on all this to lie nice and flat. And then what I would do and what I did with this leg is that I just did my inch and a half. I've cut off my, oh wait, I haven't cut off the length on this one yet, I don't think. Have I? Oh, I have. Okay, I've already cut off my length. Okay, so I would go ahead and, um, that's something to note, <laughs> and mark in an inch and a half um, on this side, take it to nothing and just use like a friction pen. And then I would move this to where it's all nice and flat and do the same inch and a half to nothing here, you know, somewhere along the leg. Um, and then just kind of sew with this extra in here. We just want our, our inseam and our outseam to match up. So don't worry about this because we want this excess in there. Um, so that's what I did for this leg, but you want your legs to match. So what we're going to do to make them match, and I'm going to show you how to do that, is that we are going to, I'm going to push all of this. We'll do the end seam first. So I'm going to push all this to the out. And I'm going to match my, um, make sure you're still in frame. Nope, you're out of frame. <laughs> okay. So I'm just going to match. So up here at the, um, the crotch, everything is the same. Like I didn't cut anything off there. And then I can still see where my, I haven't ironed it to where the, the friction pin will have gone away. So I can see that that is my end point. Oh no, I haven't taken off the edge, have I? Okay. I've not cut off the excess yet. All right. Kind of pull, make this flat. So again, that back is longer. So then I can kind of see 
my line there. Okay, so now I can go and what I like to do is just use pins. This is a trick um, that we used to do all the time in the alteration workroom when we were taking pants in like this so that both sides matched. And what you do is you literally just pin through the stitching line through all layers right there. And then I'm just going to mark, I mean, I know that I'm taking this up like three inches, but I'm just going to mark kind of that final end point there. And then I'm just going to follow my um, pins that I can see through here. So you can, you know, take your ruler up and I don't know, that may be kind of hard for you to see the pins through there, but I can see the glint of the pins and that gives me um, a road map, if you will, of that seam. So there's one side, and then I'm just going to do the same on the other side. Oh my gosh, this is dumping fluff everywhere. So now we can flip it back over, remove these pins, and do the same over here. And because I'm taking so much um, away, I will be re, um, resurging my seam lines and stuff again. All right, so now we're going to match up. I'm sorry if I'm out of frame. I'm just matching up like the pockets, for instance, up here at the top. Because <laughs> I know that I didn't do anything up there. going to do the same thing and mark it and then I'll turn it over and mark it and then I will use these lines that I've drawn to sew and I'm just going to take them to the sewing machine sew it cut off my excess seam allowance finish that again with my serger um, and then attach my cuffs and that is how I've turned this pattern into a pair of joggers okay so obviously this would be easy to do from the get-go when you're cutting out the pants um, and actually now that I've made these up I think I would shorten it another inch um, because they're just a little bit loose on but that could also be this is a modal fleece so it's a pretty drapey fleece um, but yeah here are the finished joggers and I've just added the cuff there at the bottom um, and I'll this is him now in the pants with uh, the jogger and cuffed, and he loves them. They're so soft, and now he will wear these um, outside of the house and, you know, run around the neighborhood and do all the stuff that they do, basketball and all that kind of stuff. Um, he just doesn't want any, uh, he doesn't like the pants around his shoe when he's doing all of this. I'm, whatever. <laughs> so um, that was this pair. And as we were shopping for this fabric, for this pair of pants, he we were talking about things that he would like for me to make him. And he wants me to make him some really loud button up um, short sleeve shirts for the summer, which I think is fantastic. We saw some in um, Florida when we were there back in February that were like a silk blend, um, like a real loud tropical pin prints, like a Hawaiian type shirt, you know, with a camp collar and short sleeves. And he just loved them. <laughs> wanted to wear which I think is great he's like starting to develop a little bit of a style that's beyond active wear but he wants shorts that look like nice shorts like a pair of golf shorts but that are in fact an athletic short <laughs> so he was we we're talking about fabrics we could use to make athletic shorts in the fabrics and um, it still be really comfortable for him to wear it yeah you know, 
with all of his requirements. He still wants zippers on the pockets and uh, still wants a drawstring. So yeah, so that was kind of the conversation we had. So we got back home and that's when I showed him the fabric that I got from Destashify that you guys saw in the Destashify video, the red. Um, it's a nylon with a little bit of spandex, but it's a woven, a stretch woven. And um, he loved it. He's like, yes, that's great. And so I have made him a pair of shorts out of that fabric, but I went ahead and got, so that's a fabric that Destashify had a lot of, um, so I was actually able to go back and order it in a couple of other colors. I think I got the last of the blue, but I also ordered it in a dark gray, but it also came in a light gray, a black, and then you could still get the red, the tomato red as well. Um, but I bought enough that I was able to get these shorts out of it for him, as well as um, I think I can still get my paste skirt, uh, skirt out of it as out of it. So you'll see these again in the Destashify video. But we've put, um, I've done something different with the waistband. So I cut the waistband off the top of the pant and in the video you just saw, I think I said I took it off two inches off. I actually went and took four inches off um, the top because once I thought about it, you're sewing the two inch elastic to the top and then it gets folded in on itself and then top stitched down. Um, and that creates the full waistband, which is four inches, you know, two up, two back. So I cut four inches off the top and then did a waistband that is uh, four and three quarters by, uh, what was it, like 37, I think was, and I did it the same um, circumference as the top of the shorts and then put elastic on the inside and went ahead and did the drawstring again. Now he said for the next pair, he thinks these were almost perfect, but could I put the drawstring on the inside of the pants so that he could tighten them up on the inside and tie them, but then you wouldn't have drawstrings hanging out below the shirt that he wants to wear over them to be fancy. <laughs> so with the fabrics that I have coming from Destashify, because I, again, I got, I got him the blue and the dark gray, We'll do another pair of shorts for him, and or two new pairs of shorts. Um, and I may try and find some, I just used some Ponte from my stash for the waistband, but I may try and find some athletic knit that's a little bit thinner than this Ponte um, for the top that might work, um, that blends in with the shorts a little bit better maybe. Um, and then same with the zippers, make them a little bit more um, monochromatic, but yeah. Use these zippers from my stash. Use some athletic knit from my stash. It's purple, he thinks that's fun. I mean, he's the only one that will ever see that. But we've got the zippers and the shorts, and I literally got the length of the shorts by putting a pair of his ready-to-wear shorts that he likes um, up against the pattern, matching the inseams, and then going from there, and they are perfect. He loves these, I'm so excited. So um, yeah, so I will now show you how I inserted the pocket the zipper into the pocket. Okay, so um, the way that I did this on the pants and then now on the shorts is that I constructed each leg separately. So I've already done uh, one leg. This is the left leg. <laughs> Think about that. This is the back. Um, here's the front. But I've, I'm constructing each leg separately because I'm putting um, the zipper in here in the side seam. This is a woven fabric, but it's stretchy and I had some issues there, but um, we'll do this together. <laughs> Getting better and better with each pair. But yeah, so we are constructing our um, pocket in here. I also would like to note that I have cut the waistband off of the um, this piece because I'm going to put a separate waistband on just because this is kind of a, not scratchy, but he wanted a softer knit waistband on the top of this. So I cut the four inches off the top of the pattern. Um, when I cut this out, because I'll be, that four inches was the two inches for the um, elastic and then folded down on itself to create the ending waistband. So in other words, I cut off the four inches off the top and then I did a um, waistband piece that was four inches plus seam allowances um, separate for the top, but we won't be going into that. Anyway, so typically if you were doing the pattern as is, there would be much more top here and this is um, this was basically cut off at the notch um, that's on the, the pattern. So just to kind of clarify that. But there is my pocket and I've even basted it just a little bit there to the front, um, but it does get top stitched in place so everything should swing to the front and stay to the front. Okay, so that's where we're headed. So what we need to do, some prep work first, is that I have applied some stay tape. You could do this with interfacing. 
um, to the front and the back. And I have also marked with pens. Um, where's my zipper? Marked with pens the um, st my, where my zipper stop starts and stops. Okay, that's important. <laughs> so I match, I'm measure or matching my zipper tape up here, up to the cut edge, or this would be matching the zipper tape to the notch right there at the notch. Um, but I'm marking where the zipper stop is at the top and the bottom. That's important. Um, so I've got that marked on both the front and the back. I just have already pinned those two together. Um, this is the side seam that we've pinned together, obviously. I have my zipper. I think this is a seven inch um, closed zipper. And I have put Wonder Tape on either side. So I've got it, it's double stick. So I've got it stuck down on one side and then we will un, you know, pull off the paper and stick it down when we're ready to use that. Um, I've also gone ahead and finished my side seams on both the front and the back, um, just on the side seam here because I wanna be able to press this seam open. And um, this is woven, so I did need to finish the uh, seam allowances on this. If it's a knit, you don't really need to. But I did go ahead, my pockets are actually a knit, <clears throat> an athletic knit. So the pocket pieces both have um, stay tape on that long edge, and then I have finished all edges off with my serger on both those pocket pieces, okay? So that is where we are starting. Okay, we are going to put the pockets and the zipper aside for a moment. So the first thing we are going to do is we are going to sew our um, side seam here. And we're, oops, we're gonna start at the top. And if you do have the grown on facing on there, you'll start at that top um, with a regular stitch length. I'm using a 2.5 inch or 2.5 millimeter stitch length. And I'm going to back stitch at this point. So obviously I'm going a much shorter distance because I'm putting a separate um, waistband on. All right. Okay. So I'm going to stitch to the pin. And now I'm going, this is very slippery. I'm going to switch to a basting stitch. So a five millimeter. Turn off that back stick back stitch function. And I'm just gonna pick up sewing the rest of the way down the seam. And then when I get to the next pen, I'm gonna stop, go back to a 2.5, put my back stitch, back stitch function back on. match that up <laughs> all right and then continue all the way down the side seam of the pants or in this case the shorts okay so now I'm going to go to the ironing board and I'm going to press this seam open and then I'll meet you right back here okay so I have pressed that seam open. I need my zipper and my pocket pieces. All right, I've also um, switched my um, machine to a uh, zipper foot. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, let's move those pocket pieces for a second, is um, tape in our <laughs> zipper. And um, it doesn't matter which side you do first, but I'm just going, we'll just do the side closest to us first. And I am matching up the tape to the top of my pants. Um, or if you did not cut off your little facing, you're matching that to the notch. And I am just sticking that down, matching up the um, zipper tape to the seam. Giving it a good press. So this is, um, the zipper is right side down um, into that open seam. So it's technically right sides together because the right side of your fabric is showing up from the seam. All right, and then we want the corresponding pocket piece 
right side down. So right side of the pocket piece against the wrong side of the zipper. You could um, put tape it down again. What am I doing? That's not correct. Putting the wrong one. <laughs> Whew. Okay. So we are right sides. Um, so your pocket piece, don't do what I just did. Your pocket piece um, is coming over. So it's covering the seam and the zipper. But I am matching the top of it to the notch or the top of my pants in this case and um, matching my raw edges together. Again, you could put double stick tape there if you want or you can just kind of wing it like I'm going to do. All right, so I'm going to take this and I'm flipping. I want my pocket piece down against the feed dogs. I found this is just the easiest. And I'm actually going to start stitching at that notch. And I'm also going to unzip my zipper real quick because my pull is in the way. Okay. So I don't want to start sewing up at the very top because then I can't uh, sew my pocket pieces together when I need to do that. So, good gracious. <laughs> this fabric is heavy and slippery. Not a good combo. All right. So I'm going to start sewing at that um, spot and I can see where my back stitching is. So that's where I want to start. And I am... Um, running my, I can feel the zipper teeth under here and I am running the, um, edge of my zipper foot right along those teeth. And I just want to pull this pocket piece back so that my serged edges connect. And we're just going to sew all the way down here, um, until we get to the point where we stopped basting which is right down here, right there at that spot. Okay. So, cause we want this, the bottom part of the pocket to be loose, just like the top part so that we can sew everything together when all is said and done. Okay. So that is one side. So now if we open everything back up again, That has been sewn down, so then that's going to come open, and um, when the basting's out, basically the zipper will be sandwiched between the outer fabric and the pocket. All right, now we are going to do the same. I'm going to close the zipper real quick. I have zipped up a thread. On this side, I'm going to take the tape off. Maybe. And I'm going to stick it to the other side. Okay. So now that's stuck to that side. Now we're going to take our other pocket piece. Throw it over this side. Okay, now we're going to go back to the sewing machine. Flip everything over again. Okay, and I really am just focusing on this time, making sure that my pocket piece matches um, the other pocket piece so that when I go to sew those together, they are generally okay. So that's what we want. Okay. All right. 
And then I'm gonna do the same thing. I am going to um, start sewing right there where I, my basting stitches start. And then I'm gonna sew all the way up here. I really need to unzip this, but it's all encased in the basing stitches right now. So we're gonna make it work. <laughs> and we're gonna stop there. Right in that same spot. Okay. So now, when we open it back up, we have two pieces of our pocket, but they're not sewn together yet. And we, we want that for right now. So now what we're gonna do is um, flip this right side over make note of the front you can tell by the crotch curve this is a, a little bit shorter shallower crotch curve as opposed to this so this is the back of my pants this is the front of my pants I want my pocket pieces pulled way out of the way here and I'm gonna open up those basting stitches that I did earlier which should come open really easily Okay, you can mess around with the little threads. Okay, so there we go. There's our zipper peeking through. I am going to go to the um, ironing board and just press this all really flat. I'm going to press this all open. My sewing machine is trying to take hold of my fabric here. And then make sure everything is pressed nice and flat on the back too. And then I'll meet you right back here. Okay, so everything's been pressed as nicely as possible. It's hard when you're dealing with, in this case, nylon, but any kind of polyester. Okay, so like I said, my front is this way. So I have both my pocket pieces pushed aside, and we are just going to top stitch um, from the seam around all the way down, missing our zipper stop, um, and then back to the seam again real quick, basically sewing this pocket piece under here to the front. We're not, the back piece is still open, so we're not sewing a pocket shut. Um, but we're gonna do this step real quick. I also don't wanna hit teeth there either. So we're gonna start right here. Okay. out from that seam and I'm just going to I mean you can top stitch as far away from your zipper as possible as you want but I'm just gonna go slow and again this is hard because it's a stretch woven it's so hard to get things to behave under the <laughs> the seam and back stitch okay so we've done like a little box all the way around all right now we're gonna sew our pocket together so we're gonna flip it back over so now we want to, to put our pocket together but our goal is for um, this seam allowance to stay open both at the top and at the bottom which I know can um, you know a lot of times you have to clip so that everything can lay nice and flat but basically you'll see hopefully you can see the underneath part here of this um, under part is of the pocket is folded under so we are not meeting at raw edges here at either side if that makes sense that's like folded in on itself Okay, so we're kind of just tacking things in, in those cases. And I'm actually going to unzip this zipper just a, like halfway. Okay, I'm gonna accidentally make it skew weird. 
So what we're going to do, we want everything to eventually go towards the front. So that is where our goal. Just keep that in mind. <laughs> okay, so we are going to um, flip this over and start sewing our pocket. So again, we're going to flip this over and I'm going to pull the pull the, um, this is the front right here. I'm going to pull it out of the way, but I want this to be, um, this seam allowance to be going towards the front. The other seam allowance we don't want to catch because we want it to go towards the back. So what we're going to do is we are literally just starting uh, at the seam allowance here. So we are tacking the seam allowance. I'm totally out of frame. Sorry about that. <laughs> We are tacking the seam allowance um, down to the pocket as we go. And I'm just going to go all the way around the pocket. Now, Coming around the horn here. As we come back over to this side. We are just want to make sure that we get this seam allowance caught on this side. We don't want to catch any, uh, you know, don't go too far into the seam allowance because we don't want to get any of this, you know, it's pinched over because it's been top stitch um, caught. Okay. And now our pocket is together. So now when we look here, our pocket immediately wants to go to the front, which is great. It's the whole point. All right, so now we're going to just finish our top stitching all along the rest of the outside of the pocket. So we are, I just pushed that the wrong way. So now when we will be sewing the rest of this, we should only, the pocket is going towards the front. So the pocket is all right here and we're going to finish this up. So we're only sewing through that seam allowance that's there on the other side. Okay. And then that is going to just finish that off nicely. So I'm going to start Try not to knock things off. So I just really want to make sure everything is lying nice and flat under here. Just feeling lumpy. I don't want to catch anything, so I'm just sinking my needle right where I stopped sewing. And now gonna go up. This also kind of works as a um, bar tack kind of and if you want you can go back and sew at the top and bottom a couple of more times just to really make sure that um, I'm gonna open get that out of the way just to make sure that everything is secured. There we go. And then you'll want to hit it, um, you know, with a good iron and stuff to get everything all settled. But there we have it. Our zipper pocket. Oh, one last thing. Um, just a little bit of the top of the pocket gets caught up in the seam and it's the same. Um, it gets caught when you're doing just the facing, but I'm just going to at a quarter of an inch, just base the top part of this just for the little bit that it is, you know, it's just a little, um, base that to the top though so that it definitely stays forward. So one more hit with the iron and you have a zipper pocket. So now I'm just going to go finish sew my inseams together, finish this hem, and then I'll sew them together at the crotch curve, put in the waistband, and I'll be good to go. All right guys, as always, let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Okay, so there you have it. Those are the hacks that I made to the new Thomas Track Pants. Great base pattern. I can't, he's very excited about 
making some fancy pants out of these when the weather gets cooler again in the fall. Um, you know, a couple more pairs of fancy shorts, even ones that he could wear um, golfing because we do golf together a lot. Um, but he could tuck a shirt into these if he if it's we're at a golf course where you need to have your shirt tucked in, or if he just has his polo shirt untucked, it will work for that as well, and you won't even be able to tell. Um, and this nylon is, I mean, it's going to be one of those that dries uber quick, you know, like if it gets wet, sweaty, whatever, it's going to wick and not hold on to the moisture. Um, I mean, the Ponty might hang on to the moisture a little bit more, but if I can find like a swimsuit fabric in colors and like a blue and a dark gray that match um, the fabrics I just got, which I bet I can go back to Joanne's. Um, yeah, we'll use those for the waistbands on those because he thinks this is a little scratchy to have against his waistband, and I get that. So yeah, doing the knit for the waistband and then the wovens for the shorts, and these went together so quickly. So there you have it. That is the newest pattern from Itch to, or from Glove Notions, not Itch to Stitch, from Love Notions. It is a new men's pattern, and it is on sale for the next week. Um, and they've got a bundle deal that they're running as well. I think if you buy this pattern with the boy pattern, or, uh, mm, I'll list it in the description box. It's like a two for 15 deal. So you can, um, they're doing a bundle deal just for the week while uh, the, re the release sale is going on. It's two for 15. Um, I think it may be the, this pant with any men's pattern or with the Thomas track, the boys Thomas track, um, either. You can um, bundle two and get two for 15. So, which is a great deal. But yeah, pattern's on sale for the next week. And uh, yeah, that's what we've got. Okay guys, it's a good one. If you have men in your life that you sew for, or women that want to wear um, nice track pants like this, grab it. It's great. Um, yeah, it's a really good pattern. Okay, that's all I have for today. Let me know if you have questions on the pattern stuff that I did or how I inserted the pocket, um, if anything's not clear, and I will answer those as soon as possible. All right, guys, I hope you're having a wonderful Tuesday. I have, let's see, Friday I'll be back with a um, challenge for April that I think is fantastic and a lot of you might be interested in following. So I'll be sharing my plans for that challenge on Friday. All right, guys, that's all I have for today. Hope you're having a wonderful Tuesday and I will see you next time. Bye.